This year, the QQQ has been on a continuous upward rally without any major pullbacks or any profit taking. The NASDAQ 100 index, the QQQ, is now more expensive than it has ever been in the last 15 years. But how? Should investors be worried about this and is it due for a correction? Considering high interest rates, inflation, declining liquidity levels, rising costs, major layoffs, wars, tension between countries, I mean, you'd think that investors would be a little concerned. This is where things get really interesting and it all comes down to this chart and this chart. These charts display the PE ratio of the QQQ adjusted to current interest rates. And these two charts compare the peg ratios of the top eight companies in the QQQ. And what you see here is rather concerning. So let me explain. You see, from 2009 to 2021, the stock market experienced one of the most powerful bull markets in modern history. This is especially true for QQQ, since it increased its value by 1,290% during this period until it topped in November of 2021, as you can see right here. So now what do I mean by expensive? Well, really I'm talking about two key metrics, the PE ratio and the PEG ratio. And for those who don't know, the PE ratio is the price to earnings ratio, and it is a financial metric used to evaluate the relative value of a company's stock. It compares the market price per share of a company's stock to its earnings per share, EPS. Now earnings per share, EPS, is a financial metric that measures the portion of a company's profit allocated to each outstanding share of common stock. It is a key indicator of a company's profitability and is widely used by investors and analysts to evaluate a company's financial performance. Earnings per share, EPS, is calculated by dividing a company's net earnings or net income by the number of outstanding shares of common stock. The PE ratio is calculated by dividing the market price per share by the earnings per share. So for example, a company has a market price per share of $50 and its earnings per share is $5. To calculate the PE ratio, we divide the market price per share by its earnings per share. So that's 50 divided by 5 equals 10. Simple. When a company's PE ratio is considered too high, it generally suggests that the stock may be overvalued or that investors are paying a premium for each dollar of earnings generated by the company. But you see, utilizing this metric alone doesn't really provide a clear picture. First, you need to subscribe to my channel. Okay, but if you guys can please give this video a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. Let's move on. This is simply because while the PE ratio provides a measure of the stock's current valuation based on its earnings, it doesn't account for the company's growth prospects, which is extremely important. This is why the PE ratio is often used in conjunction with the price per earnings to growth ratio, the PEG ratio, to help investors gain a more comprehensive understanding of a stock's valuation. The PEG ratio is calculated by dividing the PE ratio by the company's projected earnings growth rate. The formula is as follows. PEG ratio equals PE ratio divided by annual earnings growth rate. A PEG ratio of one is often considered fair value, indicating that the stock's valuation is in line with its expected growth rate. A PEG ratio less than one suggests that the company may be undervalued relative to its growth prospects, which is a good thing. While a PEG ratio above one may indicate that the stock is overvalued. So by using the PEG ratio in combination with the PE ratio, investors can better assess whether the stock is reasonably priced based on its earnings and growth potential. So let's continue to our main topic of discussion, the QQQ. Here you will see QQQ's PE history since 2009 and notice that its PE value has been growing from around 10 all the way to 35 from 2009 to 2021. What's really interesting is that the QQQ has still never been as expensive as it is today because this chart does not account for one major detail, interest rates. Back in 2021, the Fed's interest rate was sitting at 0.25%. Today, when the QQQ's PE ratio is at 30, the Fed's interest rate sits at 5.25%. So now adjusting the PE ratio of QQQ relative to the current interest rates, you see a big difference. The QQQ is currently sitting at the highest PE ratio it has ever been in the last 15 years. But like I said before, this doesn't really provide a clear depiction of the QQQ's valuation. So let's look deeper into its individual holdings and focus on the PEG ratio. This is where things get rather concerning. So this chart consists of the top eight companies in the QQQ, which account for 54% of the total weight of the index. Notice that companies like Microsoft, Apple, and Nvidia are seeing their PEG values at insanely high levels. There are only two companies with PEG values below one, 
but they are not much below, with one being at 0.948 and the other being at 0.923. What's really interesting is when the QQQ had a PE ratio of 35 in 2021, the PEG ratio values of the same companies ranged from only 0.27 to 1.67. For example, Microsoft had a PEG ratio of 0.83 versus today's 6.7. So even though Microsoft now has the same PE as it did in 2021, it is about eight times more expensive today than it was in 2021. Another example is Apple, whose peg jumped from 0.4 to 2.43 since QQQ's last top in 2021. Back in 2021, even Nvidia had a peg ratio below 0.9. Today, the same company's peg is at 5.2. I mean, this is pretty insane. That means all of the top companies in the QQQ, based on these ratios, are trading at extremely expensive prices. So what does this mean? What's interesting is that the top five large cap tech stocks have contributed more than 80% of the S&P 500 total returns this year, and even more so for the QQQ. While almost 67% of other stocks in the NASDAQ are trading below their 200 day moving averages, so it almost seems as if the market is being carried by big tech. The question is, how long is this going to last and is there a chance investors will recognize that they are trading at a premium? Back in 2021, NASDAQ's PE of 35 made sense, considering the almost 0% interest rate environment and the 20 to 25% growth rate. Today's PE of 30 is not really justified given a 5.25% interest rate environment and total lack of growth. You see, in order for NASDAQ to become cheaper than it is right now, reports say that either corporate earnings have to jump significantly or prices have to fall. And currently, many indicators show that the economy is slowing down. And although most tech companies beat analyst estimates, they have issued their forward guidance calls for further drops in their profits. It could be two to three years before corporate profits return to where they were at the peak of 2021. Since the beginning of the year, QQQ is up 25% without any pullbacks, corrections, or meaningful dips. So the notion of sell and may and go away completely disappeared. And there hasn't even been any profit taking yet. It's been going up in a straight line and there's still over six months left in the year. So I guess all I'm saying is that things seem to be quite odd and investors need to ask themselves, is this sustainable in the long run? And that is all for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next one.